then this pull request means that for the release that we intend to do for the next week, the focus area of code development could be sort of complete at the focus area level. So if you don't mind, let's go very quickly through it so that uh, you all can understand it and, and find that we all agree. So if you go to the um, Git repository and you have focus areas and you look at code development.nd, there you have, I'm, I'm just going to uh, write the link in the chat, just to be sure that we all are looking at the same thing. I got it. Okay, here you have. Okay, thank you. Sure. Then, uh, if, if you very briefly go through it, very quickly, so the, the three goals that we are having for now is activity, efficiency, and quality that we are inheriting from the previous work on, on GMD. Uh, there are some of observations trying to, to put some shadows on, on, on those um, goals. Then we have the questions and metrics, which is a still work in progress because maybe we can define some more questions and metrics, but this, are, this is the current proposal, let's say. And you can see how we have uh, for goal activity, three questions. The first one is how many changes are happening in the source code. The second one is with respect to proposals. And remember that proposals is the name that we are using for code reviews, or let's say change the subject to code review. Then how many proposals for changes to the source code are happening? Okay, that's, that's the question. And for issues, the question is how many issues uh, are happening during a certain time period. And then for each of these questions, there are some metrics that try to quantify them. Remember that the goal question metric, the idea is to define the goal, then to define some questions that should help to reach that goal, which usually is a knowledge goal, and then some metrics that should help to answer the question. So for, for changes, finally we came to only two metrics for now, which is the, the raw number of code changes, which is basically the raw number of commits, and then code change lines, the number of lines in all the commits. So you have another measure of the volume of activity. So for proposals and for issues, both are quite similar. In the case of proposal is the raw number of proposals that is called reviews and the number of uh, proposals accepted and the number of proposals declined. Obviously, you can also compare accepted to decline and proposals to accepted and whatever. But for now, we are only providing the, the three basic metrics. And from looking at the three of them, you should be having a more complete view of the code review activity. Then for issues, it's basically the same thing, but instead of accepted and declined, we are using uh, active and closed. Active means it's open during a certain period and closed or it's closed. Then for goal efficiency, we are settling on the two questions. Sorry, uh, yeah, two questions. One is related to proposals and the other one is to issues. The first one is basically how efficient is the code review process. And the second one is basically how uh, efficient is the period dealing with issues. And then we have um, quite similar metrics for both of them, if you look at them. So the first one is the, the, the basic um, um, duration metric. So how long are the staff open, either pull request or or issues, either code review or issues. The second one is uh, participants, which is also in both cases. So how many people are participating? The, the idea here is that the more people that are participating, the let's say less efficient the process is. Maybe that's good for other reasons because you have more eyes on, on a back, for instance, or more eyes on a code review. But from the point of view of, efi of efficiency, that means that there is more work put on this specific code review or this specific issue. And then the, the backlog is basically how the project is dealing with uh, the influx of new staff, new issues or new pull requests. So how many proposals are still on the site or how many issues are still open. And then we have a summary metric, which is also common for both, which is the throughput. Throughput is basically how many enters related to how many um, is on, is closed. And then for the specific case of code reviews, we have two more uh, metrics, which are acceptance. 
So the, 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 let's say the part of, uh, of the code reviews which lead to effective committing, the rest of those are, let's say, wasted effort in the sense that it doesn't lead to changes. And the proposal acceptance radio, which is basically, uh, again, this, how efficient is the project, which fraction, which fraction of proposals are finally accepted. And uh, for quality, we don't have, we only have the questions. We didn't work in the metrics yet. So that's probably the next target. And we have, uh, for now, we have quality in code review and quality in testing. Uh, the, the assumption here is that we are dealing with processes, not with the final result. And the better the code review is, probably the better the product is. And the better the testing is, probably the better the, the product is. And, um, and that's it with respect to this um, file. So agreeing on this means for now that we are going to release this as the structure of the focus area with some metrics that are already implemented that we are going to talk about them now. But the, 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 the following work would be to go on with the rest of the metrics basically mapping them to the metrics that we have uh, in legacy. So those that were already defined, but maybe we need to change the name or to redefine or something like that. And some of the metrics are new so that we need to work with them. Yeah, I think, I, so I think, and, and there's another pull request that you made around, around some of these as well. I think, so there are, like I'm actually, candidly, I was confused this morning when I was trying to go through and figure out, okay, which ones need to be fleshed out yet? And mm -hmm. I didn't notice that we have uh, code changes that we did that a month ago, um, but there's still code commits in there. Code commits is what I believe we merged with the metrics repository. So there's another need to, we have to align um, those two with each other. Um, and I actually made a commit. One of my commits this morning was, um, uh, updating code commits, but now that's code changes. Um, and, and so I think it is keeping, keeping like aligned with, okay, these are the metrics that we're building and here's their files and their names. And when we, I'm okay changing the names cause I like, I like code changes. It's clearer than, well, it's, it's more abstract than code commits, but I assume there's a reason that we're using changes instead of commits. Like the, that's, yeah, and I so, talked about honestly, it, but. honestly, I think that we need to sell our names. I prefer some names better than others, but the, the, the most important issue from my point of view is to, to settle on something. So that yeah, I no, and I, I don't care what the names are either, but if we've, and my only point, I think in one of the comments I made this morning on the pull request, a different pull request that we'll probably discuss is that we make sure okay. that if we do get rid of, or we, if we change a name, that we create some sort of way that that becomes transparent. So if people have been starting to, cons so for example, we've aligned our list of metrics in the markdown files with what's now in, in the metrics repository, which is the one, I look at that as a one-stop shop for people coming to chaos to consume metrics. And if we change the name here, okay. But then I think we have to change, I think we have to do two things and maybe put this up for discussion. We have to change the name back in the metrics repo and we have to give people some kind of list of the names that we've changed and what's been changed to what over time so that we don't have people who start to try to consume the metrics and then we change the name, but it's the same thing. All right. I'll chime in. So if you change, yeah. the, if you do change the name, that's totally cool. I mean, that's, yeah. The, the intention is, is that the working groups work however you need to work and do the, the constraint shouldn't come from the metrics repository. At all. Well, the, the constraint's not from the metrics repository as an entity unto itself. The constraint is from somebody coming to chaos to consume the metrics. I think if we've named metrics, <clears throat> we have a certain obligation to stick with a name uh, because if someone started to consume it and we change the name, then they're confused. Well, yeah, so so my, my, my assumption was that all the metrics up to now were legacy in the sense that they were never discussed as a whole uh, in a detailed way. So that the first uh, metrics that we are really releasing are those that we release next week. But still I understand what you mean because even when they are not, let's say, official, many people may be consuming metrics from uh, this. So anything that we can do to uh, clarify changes and everything, that's a good thing. Yeah, like, I mean, 
frankly, I mean, I mean, let me, can I finish my thought for a yeah. second? Yeah. Good. So, <laughs> so, um, so the keeping it aligned with the metrics repository is, is not going to be a problem. So all I would ask is if you, so I think there's two points here. So all I would ask is if you change the name in the working group, just post an issue in the metrics repository that there's been a name change. I can keep those things aligned super duper easily. Um, and then in terms of, of consuming kind so of- You should post an issue in the metrics repository? Yeah, the just, change? yeah just point it out to me somehow. That's, so that that's, I, I, think, I think that's a sufficient process is that if we change the name of something, we create an issue in the metrics repo. Yeah, and I, I can change it in the table, really no problem at all. Um, so that'll allow you to, to change the names as you see fit. So that was what I was talking about. The constraint from, there's no constraint from the metrics repository. We will respond to the working groups and then. But only um, if we tell you what to respond to. Correct. If you don't tell me, I won't ch make any changes. Um, yeah. And then I'll blame you if there's <laughs> a disconnect <laughs> between the two. Um, so then, and then the other issue is that if the name changes over time and people maybe have been using an older name and now the name has changed to kind of reflect the more current state of affairs. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I think this gets into the versioning question that has been cycling mm -hmm. around for a long, long time. I, I, I sincerely believe that if, if over time and over talking with talking to people and trying to deploy these metrics in your tooling, if the, the original name is inappropriate, change it. If it doesn't work, you just you need to change it to make it be what is the most appropriate name. So I'm not sure how to resolve that with the versioning because that's still wide open in terms of how we actually do versioning. Um, so but those before, those are my two comments. Yeah. Before we started with this discussion on versioning, I was thinking about doing this kind of stuff like mapping to all versions of the metrics and all of that at this time. So that every release in the changes file or something like that would be same. Uh, for this version, uh, for this metric, we change the name to this one. And uh, what was in version one that zero was something now in version two zero is something yep. else. Exactly. That, that since we are, I agree with you that since right now we are in the process of discussing the version, and maybe we can wait. With, I mean, having the idea that we need to track this somehow. But until we decide how the, the version is actually done, maybe it's difficult to decide how to do this. Because for instance, right now, when do you open this issue at the metrics repository? Mm -hmm. Because on, on the one hand, supposedly at least the working group needs to have an agreement, and that means having at least the focus area file edited accordingly, accordingly. Which means right now, because we just uh, approved this version of the file. Yep. So usually that's going to be at release time. Which we yep. can just you know to settle them and freeze everything. That that maybe we can um, delay the discussion until we have and, and wait until kind of versioning is. Yeah, but um, but but they but they we would see that the, the less uncertainty that we create and that and the more we can help people to understand that, that this maps to something else or whatever that's that's good. Yeah, so maybe it's just a, a conscious effort by the working group to try not to change the names <laughs> unless but, it's really absolutely necessary. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think where this was triggered for me, like the one code changes changed from code commits a month ago didn't didn't really light up my radar. But when I was going through the pull request Jesus opened in the last day or so, where there's a whole, and I guess this was in the pull request I merged this morning and I, I didn't really recognize what what that all meant we're changing a whole bunch of metric names that, that we've had for a while. And, you know, while I agree that they are a legacy, you know, we are trying to define things more clearly now. I also don't know that we need to, you know, at some point if we've had a file out there and there are, I know we reference these a lot. So if all the names change, it's like a mapping exercise. Um, it's a source of confusion and I guess my question is, you know, if we don't have to change the name, maybe we try to not change the name. No, in general, I agree with the, with the idea of not trying to change the names. But in most of the metrics, um, my my view, is, and this is very personal because, you know, I was not involved when the metrics or when the names were decided. But my personal view is that they are very tied to a specific system. 
And, Very tight uh, to what? To a specific systems, to GitHub completely. Ah, uh, yes. Which means, which means that, first of all, in some cases, they are they, are, they may be a bit a bit misleading. So, for instance, when when you talk about a commit uh, in uh, CVS, CVS is very old, you know, but it still is there. And yes. when you talk about a commit in CVS and a commit in Git, they are pretty different. And yeah, you're right. Pull request, request is a really good example of. And pull request is even better. Yeah, because it was the name different. the name needed to change because that was too tied to GitHub. I yeah, I agree. So, with that. On the other hand, basically, we need to decide whether we say something like commit, and then we explain this is a general name for changes, but we are using commit because of historical reasons or whatever, or we change the name and we just say, uh, we are now calling this code changes because we feel it's more clear, but this is basically what we call code commits one month ago. Yeah, so right. It's basically uh, the system between both things. And honestly, I, I'm more interested in working the metrics themselves than in the names. Yeah. So just, just for you to have an idea, in, in, in Grimoire Lab, we are calling to this commit because we are not supporting anything that or a commit is not a commit, let's say. Uh, I felt that the idea of making these changes, for instance, was more sensible, trying to be as general as possible and also as, as forward looking as possible because probably this is going to happen once and again as time passes with new systems implementing changes in different ways. Because the idea of change is, going, is always going to be there, but how that's implemented in a source code management system that's going to change, I'm pretty sure. I hear, uh, that, okay, I understand. I think, uh, unless, we, unless we get a handle on, on some of the confusion around the names though, uh, <clears throat> it's just the, the confusion is gonna continue to, to uh, occur. I, I would suggest we create like a, a dictionary document where we can or we can identify, well, I, you know, what we're calling these things. Well, I, I think I've been taking the names as the dictionary, and if we if we change the names, maybe that document might just include anything that we've renamed. No, um, no, that, that, that's sensible, and that actually could be an explanation for the change, just to show that the change is not that because we want it, that because we feel it is better somehow. So maybe in the dictionary itself. We I think it's a, I think that's a good idea, and I don't think it's a ton of overhead because I don't see a lot of things mm. changing all the time. <laughs> No, yeah. no, so I don't think it's uh... no. In, in general, it's just a couple of words, but that means yeah. a lot of metrics. So, for instance, changes is just one word that is affecting. I don't know, but maybe ten or twenty different metrics. So, do you think at this point it's just creating a new markdown file called dictionary or something like that, naming dictionary? Yeah, maybe naming or something like that, which is okay. clear enough. Maybe we can open an issue for that. Yeah, that's good right now. Okay. Okay, thank you. So um, coming back to this file, so um, this would be the proposal for, from the working group for the release, and this would be the, 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 the one of the focus areas that could be released. So if you all agree, we can consider this as the current version, and of course in the next iteration, we are going to go through it once again. Mm -hmm. So. What's the proposal? It's to release the, the names of the metrics that we just reviewed? Basically, I would suggest to release the focus area file as such. Yeah. So because we, of yeah. Basically saying this is the current agreement of the group. We are still working on this, but currently this is the agreement of the group. And I think, I think the, um, the only question I have is, do people expect when we release um, the focus area, and we've listed the metric names that we have fully developed metric definitions for each of the names in the focus area. So we can make a note in the release note, in the release notes, specifically saying that we are releasing all the names, we are still working on them, we have this number of metrics implemented. Okay. Yeah, so I think that works. Uh, yeah. I think that we, with the release, we need to have some kind of release notes that is going to basically say what we are releasing. And that's yeah. where we can have this. Because I agree with you, if we would say a name here, maybe somebody is expecting, well, this should be implemented. And, and they just to, to explain exactly what we are doing. Yeah. And it would be, we are proposing this structure for the focus area, which includes the names of the metrics, but we are still working on the metrics. We have, we have some of them, but not all of them. I, I agree with that. I think I think that'll work. And then the what a release is is that's the thing that we're going to discuss at the board meeting, right? That's the because yeah. 
So yeah. this model works really well as long as the release is considered. I guess it works well under either model. Yeah. So no, and, and and something that we can do. This is an idea. I don't remember if yours or or Matt's, uh, including a table at the end of the document saying these are the metrics that are currently implemented. So the way we have legacy metrics below at the end or at the bottom of the of the document, we have another one which is implemented metrics or defined metrics or something like that. And have the list of the metrics that we are actually releasing. Because we would be releasing the file with the structure of the focus area and these metrics. Okay. Okay, so I can I can write that for the next um, meeting. But yeah, and I guess it's yeah, and I, we don't have to write that until we actually do the release. <laughs> yeah, and we agree on the metrics, which are still subject to pull requests. So, okay. Then, if you are, if you are, well, if you are good with this, let's go to the pull requests. Right on. Okay. So, starting uh, by the oldest, by the end, uh, we have the community manager use case which you were proposing, thanks for the new version. I was commenting on it. So for me, it, uh, I basically agree with it. Only two minor comments. One is oh, we already discussed it related to the name of the metric. Uh, and the other one is related to the metric itself. Maybe we can just uh, have the use case and remove the metric. Because right, right now, the metric is included in the pull request. Oh, the, the, my updates to code commits. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I have to just pull that into a different branch and yeah, okay. that, okay. yeah I, should so, have done that. That, I should have done that as a separate pull request. So I'll, I'll fix okay. that. Okay. Thank you. So from my point of view, that could be good enough. Then there is a, a, a mention to that metric, which I think the only thing is would be to, to mention the new name of the metric, which would be code change. And yeah, and I think what I'll do is I'll pull code changes out, and uh, I'll, I'll pull code commits. I don't know. Should I should I commit? Should I create a pull request for my changes to code commits, or should I pull that back and make suggestions on the new code changes document? Like instead so of, I think that code commits is way different right now. So um, because yeah. if you remember, we were we were working with it like one month ago. And the current version of code commits of, of code changes is way different of the version of code. Yeah, commits. that's what I mean. Like they take the I don't think the ideas are are unrelated to code changes. They just aren't yeah. structured the same way. So I would take code so would, add to uh, it where it's appropriate. Yeah, exactly. So I would suggest that yeah. to keep the use case in this in this pull request. And if you want to start a new pull request with any changes that you may want for the code changes. Metric. Yep. So if you agree, I think that we are done with this. Once we can submit the new version. Yep, I'll get I'm, that. I'm happy, I'm happy to merge it. Yep, I will I will do that. Okay, thank you. Um, then uh, if nobody has if nobody else has uh, has comments, we can go to the next one. Which is a uh, new use case hints for maintainership position. This is waiting. This is uh, sorry. This is uh, pull request number ninety one, and this is uh, still waiting for Carl's uh, comments. We can ping him, but we need him for um, basically saying that he agrees because it is his use case. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess okay. we just kind of hold on that one, right? Yeah. Then the next one, 95, is uh, a new proposal. What about proposal. 91? Sorry? 91 is the one for uh, related, <clears throat> sorry. 91 is the one uh, waiting for CARES, for CARES comments. What about the maintainership? The, okay. So that's the one that I, I, I propose it on behalf of a CARES for those. Uh, okay, all right, so I'm, all right. I was, okay, got it, got it, sorry, go ahead. Okay, no problem. So I was moving to uh, 95. Yeah. Which is a proposal for the code change lines metric. 
and basically need um, feedback or acceptance or whatever. So this is one of my proposals for the next release. And what I try to do is to um, keep the idea of um, uh, lines change to commits, but trying to write them in a way which is uh, independent of the underlying system. And I think um, I made some comments to this effect in the other pull request. I don't know how I missed this one or maybe I just ran out of time. Okay, do you prefer uh, that we start with the other one? No, I mean, well, I mean, th th we could t discuss, it's the delete, it looks like this request deletes code commits and code lines of code changed. Sorry, can you repeat? Um, so, the this deletes code this deletes the old code commits and code lines of code change metrics right uh, i think so let me check i mean it's in the i'm looking at the files changed and it's yeah that is it yeah there's yeah there. right right and that's that's because for code commits in fact it is it was deleted by code changes but we didn't do the deletion I mean, the, the equivalent metric is code changes that we already accepted, but when we accepted it, we didn't delete code commits from the repository. Okay. So that's why I included it here. Maybe I should be doing a different pull request, but um, I'm sorry I, I did it here. No, well, it's all right. I mean, I, 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 I just wanted to, I mean, as long as we kind of, this was to my earlier point about like before we were delete code commits and code lines of code changed, I would want those things in like a dictionary that's linked to the current definitions and things that we're calling. In, in the case of code commits or of code lines or of code change, it is not exactly deleting, it's just moving to the new name. The problem yeah. is that Git is keeping I the path this way. That it's basically, I, I started with that. It was pretty empty, empty but anyway, I started with yeah, no, that one code commits was empty. There are a couple comments in in code lines of codes change. Yeah. I, so, yeah, let's just uh, this seems. And my other question, which I'm looking at this one now for the first time. Sorry. Okay. No uh, when you say use cases, um, like we talk about use cases up a level, we're talking about things like the the community manager or the one that Ray submitted. Or is, is volume of coding activity, is that raise use case? So to be honest, uh, I, I just kept this because we have it in the, in the template. And uh, oh. I think that at some point, we should be um, commenting here about use cases that we have. I mean, the, the current use cases, which are these detail, detailed description of use cases. But uh, up to now, what I tried to do was to adapt to the idea of how this could be used, which is, I think, what we had in the previous version of these metrics before we had the real use cases and so on. Because we had this section on the definition of the metric, and if you look at some of the metrics, apparently it was for discussing how this metric could be useful. Uh, and okay. that's what I just tried. So my impression is with time, we should be migrating to just citing uh, use cases here saying, like you say, this is related to the code maintainership uh, use case, for instance, and I have a link to the use case. But right now, for instance, we don't have real uh, use cases for this metric, which could be related to, I want to know about the, the volume of code activity. And that's why I included that one, to have something. Okay. Um, thanks for explaining it. I'm following this now. Um, okay. is, uh, uh, are we doing just one review for a commit? Like for merging, is that our practice? Uh, um, we don't really have a practice, uh, but I think that at least we need one review. All right, so maybe I'll, maybe we, we can settle on more than that, but no, I think one is fine. I just I just wanted to ask before I hit merge because I think I think that one can be merged. yeah. Okay. So I think I think one is fine, and the way that you that these pull requests are talked about weekly, yeah. I mean, I think that's kind of a review unto yeah. itself. Yeah, so uh, I just yeah. that one. <clears throat> no, in any case, I think that if we have opposing reviews, we can discuss that. If we have clearly consensus, nobody is objecting, and, that, and that's it, we can move forward. 
Yeah, yeah my questions are just understanding what we changed and what we're doing, so. Okay, no, that's fine, because I know that in many of these cases, this is complex. And this is also the first time we are doing this. So it's very important that we all are on the same page and we devote to that the time that we need, because this is going to be investing for the future. Yeah, yep, agreed. So, number, sorry, Casey, so I guess you can carry on with the next pull request. Okay, okay. Then the, the next one in my list is uh, number 996, which is minor changes to code changes. Yeah. This more the syntactic and the stuff yeah. like that. I just yeah. said okay, and I'm, I'm re I'll just merge that one too. Okay, perfect. So if somebody can, if you can merge, that's fine. Otherwise, merged. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the last one is 97, which is a bunch of uh, three metrics related to uh, proposals or code reviews. And uh, this is even more important than the other one because issues is quite similar. So once we agree with this, uh, very likely we can do the same with issues. So my idea was to try to open this during the weekend so that maybe for early next week, we can have issues also so that somebody can review them. Because if we have a general agreement in this, issues and pull requests are very similar for this. So I was reading this morning your um, review. Thank you very much, uh, Sim. And uh, um, I think that we are mo almost on the same page, except for a couple of uh, very specific things that I think are general enough for, for our discussion. And uh, the first one is to which extent we should be using uh, stuff like uh, GTorrent as one of the, um, let's say, things to describe or Reference implementation or? Yeah, I'm, I'm not now talking about the reference implementation. Well, maybe you are, uh, because one of the things that they didn't know is exactly what would, what do you want to mention about GeoTorrent? And uh, because uh, if you look at the structure of the template, uh, the specific description is not exactly for how to compute the metric, but for describing the specifics of the data source with respect to the metric. So for instance, ma making this difference between what is a pull request in GitHub or what is a merge request in GitLab, which is quite similar, but not exactly the same. And what is a code review in Garrett, which is pretty much different. And the idea was how to map the general idea of proposals for code change to pull request, mer merge request, and change sets, which is the name in, in Garrett. And I, I, I was thinking it, it this way. But I'm happy to revisit that because the, the general idea of the, uh, of the metrics file is to include all the details. So if you want to include something related to um, how it can be computed from a geotorrent or something like that, I'm happy. But I think that we need to, f to see how it fits in the current description, in the current schema of the, of the file. So, so the, we'd had, uh, links to a reference implementation as part of what we're doing for metric definitions. Did we decide not to have that anymore? Did I not track that conversation carefully mm -hmm. enough? So what we had is that the, 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 the reference implementations were going to be done with Percival, you know, because we discussed that. And, uh, but still we can have more implementations. And right now we have this section on- I see. The, the name. So where I put, so where I put, sorry to interrupt. No, no, no problem. So I was just saying that, uh, sorry, I, I cannot see it now. Okay, if, if you look at the file, uh, you can see, uh, I mean, the general structure of the file, um, you have the section on noun implementations, which is now mentioning in some cases, uh, Augur and uh, Grimoire Lab or only Grimoire Lab or whatever. My feeling is that if you want to mention how to implement this with a uh, torrent, maybe in the context of, of Augur, we could do it that way, that in, in that place. I mean, we can, we can be as much specific as we may want. And uh, if you want, we can say this is implemented in Augur and for implementing it, Algo is using GeoTorrent, and it is doing it this way, and exactly with the query or whatever that you may want. Yeah, and, in, in and my comment, that, here, 
Yeah. In my comment here, I was more addressing GH Torrent as a resource unto itself that people could use to understand mm -hmm. the co concrete implementation of the metric. So I think there's another comment somewhere that I made using actual Python from uh, Augur, but in this case, I'm just saying to, to explain it. Because I, I think the thing that's new to me that we didn't have before and I wasn't quite sure how to use or what we were thinking there is that we've got GitHub, GitLab, um, Garrett. So we've got three specific things now in the metric definitions that we didn't have before. And is that something that we're going to try to sustain as a structure? So um, this is something that I uh, thought, if you remember at some point we decided that we should be, we should, uh, sorry, we should be mentioning how to map this metric to actual data sources, to the right. actual that people are using. And the way of doing that, that's what I thought it, it was more convenient. Okay. And, and this was specifically for that. So this is the okay. idea of a pull request. Sorry, this is the idea of a proposal, but how do you map a proposal in the case of a GitHub or in the case of Garrett? And, uh, and that's why it's called a specific description because the idea is, okay, in the very specific case of GitLab, what is a proposal and how is this metric computer somehow, but not, I mean, not with the code because that's in a different part of the, of the description. Right. But that's a discussion just to, to, to let people map the general idea of proposal to specific things in GitHub, for instance. But then if you go below, we have noun implementations. So below reference implementation, which I think should be done with, uh, um, um, sorry, with uh, Perceval and that, we have noun implementations. And something that we can do is, since many of the metrics, you have them implemented in Augur using uh, GeoTorrent, Something that is very easy to do and could be quite convenient is Algor is a known implementation and Algor is using this query into GeoTorrent to for this method. And, uh, and, uh, and that would be providing a very specific idea of how to implement that if you are interested in the GeoTorrent, which I agree, it's a very useful uh, data source. Yeah, I don't want to, I mean, I don't think Augur is going to be coupled to GHTorrent the way it is now. I think GHTorrent is useful if people want to do quick compare. Well, if, if you prefer, we can we can also decouple both. So we can say in Grimoire Lab it is implemented this way, in Augur it is implemented this way, and if you want to implement it in uh, using data in a GHTorrent, you can do this query. Yeah, and, and my, only, my only concern or question is just making sure that we're trying to be super clear with people about how they can get their heads around what it is and then yeah. see see it in action. Um, yeah, yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that. So uh, if, if, if you agree, what we can do is in noun implementations, include then one section for Grimoire Lab, another one for Algor if it is implemented in these systems, and another one for JTorrent if we know how to query JTorrent. And you, you usually know, so you can fill that part if you want. Right. What do you think? Is that okay? So yeah, we would want to. So GH, so put. I'm, let me. GH Torrent and Augur and Grimoire. Where would GH Torrent go under? Like GH Torrent, Augur, and Grimoire Lab would be known implementations. But we, you are, you are yeah, doing, and maybe maybe uh, some more, but at least this this three we know them. Okay. So we can but, uh, yeah, moving under yeah. So I guess you could, and you had a question about the. I guess this was. Uh, okay. All right. So if, if you agree, it could be just a matter of maybe we can commit a, a series now. But then you can pull request if you know how to do this with uh, Augur or with uh, GeoTorrent. Right. Just, just include a new line in noun implementation as a pull request, and I can go through it and accept it. Okay. All right. Yeah, because I want to do that right away so that we have that. Because okay. I don't want to release metrics without having some some of these examples. Like I want to set this expectation. Okay, that's um, fine. In, 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 in any case, uh, for, for all the reference implementations, I think that 
if we succeed, this Google Summer of Code in turn is going to, to help with this. Yeah. On the other hand, um, and now talking about specifically this um, metric uh, proposals, uh, I'm not sure that the one that you were referencing from Augur corresponds exactly to this. If I look at the comments, so it's not a matter of discussion now. If I look at the comments, and, and you can decide because you know Augur much better. Yeah, and I'm just trying to, I thought I made a Python comment somewhere and I'm a little bit puzzled by what I did that on. <laughs> okay, okay. Maybe so in any case, in any case my, my concern is that reading the SQL, my impression is that you are talking about the uh, issues that are open at a certain snapshot in time. Right, and is that while, what this is? The, the, the metric is the pull request that were started during a certain time so that you can track the activity not the backlog. The backlog is in, is in uh, below, in, I don't remember, because basically what we are talking about is the backlog, so those are, that, are, that are still open. And okay. uh, that's a different metric. So it, I think it's a matter with the naming only. Okay. So have a look at that, because my impression is that uh, in uh, Algor you don't have specifically this metric. You, you have some others that are similar, are, are some of the other ones that are in the focus area, but not this one. Okay. On the other hand, it should be easy for, to implement for you if you want. Because looking at the SQL query that you uh, commented here, it could be just a matter of not filtering it because you are filtering now for open. So if you don't do that, my impression is that you are getting exactly this metric. So have a look at that if you want. Okay. I, I wrote a comment about that. Let me reread the definition of this and make sure I understand what this is because Please. Yeah, so the, the general, go and read it if you want, but the general idea is these are new proposals for changes during a certain period. So that you can say in January, the project started 150 new proposals for changes, new code reviews, new pull requests, whatever. So not is, irrespective of what was opened. No, because- no, I mean, sorry, irrespective of what was closed, you want to know in January, how yeah. many proposals were opened? Exactly, because this is mostly related to activity and not to how the project is dealing with a backlog or something like that. So the, the important, from my point of view, the important point here is how many uh, pull requests, for instance, people are starting in the project, which is going to give you an overall idea of the activity in proposing changes. Right, but while the other one that you are mentioning here I think that sort of corresponds to the uh, proposals backlog. So how many proposals we are still yeah. didn't decide at a certain point in time. All right. Okay. I'm, so, but, I'm, but in any case, have a look because uh, you have the details there and I know, I know that you know your metrics much better. So well, I might, what I, I might do is, what I might do is just to suggest some additional language in the definition. Okay. Okay, that's fine. And uh, with respect to the implementation with uh, GeoTorrent, I think that if you want, you can bring quite easily adapt that one. Yeah, oh yeah, that, that changing it to just what was opened in a period. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks, Jesus. No, thanks him. So go, go through it, and if you feel that we can merge as it and, and work with it in the further pull requests, Please comment so. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise we are still discussing in, in it. But I think these I are the main, the yeah, main well, aspects that we are discussing in the in the text is what we already commented. Yeah. Oh, I think since we're going to be at the leadership summit, what I'll then we want to have some things to show. I'll merge this, and okay. and then issue another pull request to make the changes that I want. Okay. In any case, I will I will try to be agile if you submit any pull request interviewing it quickly so that we can have it for the next week. Okay. So if you have any kind of suggestion or whatever, just uh, pull request it or or issue it and I will try yeah. to If you can, I'll do a pull request in the next day or two and if, if you're able to merge it before the leadership summit, that would be great. Okay. But in I'll any merge. case, I, I will also be trying to add pull requests for issues, quite similar to this one on proposals, but okay. for issues. And uh, so that the idea would be to try to have um, around 10 metrics for the, right. for the meters. 
which seems yeah. to be a, a name, a number. Yeah, and um, that sounds good. Okay, and I think we are done with pull requests. Since we are on, on time, do you think that this is good enough for now? And, uh, or do you want to discuss something else? I think, I think we can catch up with the other items after the leadership summit and just pay, att okay. pay attention to the repo between now and then. Okay. By the way, uh, do you want to have, I mean, all of you to have a meeting next week or since you are going to be busy with the leadership summit, you prefer to skip that one? I think we don't have it next week and we stick with the leaders, you know, and we meet it again in two weeks after the leadership summit. It's going to be hard to get okay. out during the leadership summit. Is it no, that, that's what I assume. So um, let's cancel the meeting for the next week. Yeah. So the next one is in 15 days. Okay, we, we can, I can send an, an announcement to the mailing list. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? I think that's it. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. All right. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye.